Welcome to the first uh, New Zealand Rural Roundup podcast. Um, I'm Joe Scott Jones, I'm a GP in the North Island of New Zealand and um, my colleague here. I'm Buzz Burrell and I'm a GP in the South Island uh, and I think we've been in rural general practice a similar amount of time really. Probably about 80 years between the two of us. Give or take an inch, yes. you're about right. Uh, they, um, and we thought it'd be a really good idea to start having some sort of a regular podcast to talk about rural health issues uh, for New Zealand. Crucial. Um, and absolutely crucial. And there's so many different things that are coming up. I can't think of a more exciting time for rural health, to be honest. We've got a new election coming up. We've got alliancing coming up. We possibly have a new government, even got an old government with new ideas. Yep. Things are going to change. We've got different funding streams, got different ways of doing things. It's going to be really exciting. It I is. I feel is. sorry for people not involved in rural health, really. They're missing <laughs> out, aren't they? Mm. I really enjoy it. I don't know about you. Why did you become a rural GP? Oh, God, it's a long story. It involves defective potty training in childhood, I think. Uh, <laughs> now, honestly, to be honest with you, because I was uh, stuck in rural... No, no, I wasn't. I was stuck in hospital medicine, mainstream urban hospital medicine, and to be honest, it was boring. Right. I did a locum in rural medicine, never looked back. It was much more challenging, much more interesting, much harder, uh, but a valve I went through and one I don't regret doing. And uh, um, what about yourself? Uh, I think my first experience of rural, being a rural GP was in uh, the outskirts of Bristol in the UK, where I did my GP training. Yeah, and I, I was rural. Uh, it, well, no, it wasn't real. Well, the guy who took to, <laughs> he took me around in his Land Rover, oh, that's and rural. Um, yeah. he stopped by a field that had a goat in it, and he said, "There you go." This welcome, is a rural journey. Welcome practice. to New Zealand. That's, that's right. fantastic. And, uh, the, um, but we moved. The court case, you got over that already? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, um, we moved to what, 23 years ago and landed in the Podiki uh, and uh, have stayed there ever since. Yeah. I, I think what I found was a place that was really welcoming, really friendly, but also a place where I could use all of my skills and, uh, and, and, and continue to do so. It's been really interesting how it's evolved the sort of things that you can do. So, yeah, I am excited to be a rural GP and I, you know, I, I do really love it. I'd love other people to, to, uh, to catch on to that excitement as well, which is one of the goals of doing this podcast, I think. Jan Chow, you know I've known each other well over 20 years. I've just realised just tonight that, give or take an inch, we've been about the same time. 22 years ago, I went to Reefton from having been a mainstream physician right. and exactly the same as you, uh, suddenly found my niche. I feel sorry for people not doing rural general practice. I've heard it said that uh, the urban GP is doing less than 10% of what the rural GP does. And have you heard that statistic? Or? No, yeah. no, that does sound quite uh, frightening, really. Well, it does. Sound. I think it's probably an exaggeration, really, by and large. But you're dead right. The breadth and the meaningness, meaningfulness of it is just uh, incredible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, certainly I was um, on call last night um, for um, covering our local mental health team, actually, because we sort of support them. They have a, we have difficulty getting psychiatrists in our, in our region. And um, just the ability to do that, to support the ambulance, you know, um, I, 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 it might sound slightly crazy, but I do find that quite exciting. No, it's um, not as crazy as a person you would have had with a mental health issue. But I say that on Monday, I had exactly the same. I had a mental health patient and... Uh, um, within five minutes, had four policemen and one with a taser gun uh, mm. pointing at the guy, and I uh, thought to myself, "This is exciting." Yeah, yeah. Didn't happen every day. So it'd be good to sort of share those sort of stories, I think, on a podcast. But I think it'd be also really good to sort of highlight some of the the things that are happening in rural health. Um, as you say, we've got the alliancing space uh, which we're entering into, and um, I think that will be for 2014. That's obviously going to be a big challenge, mm. but also an opportunity, I think, for, for for rural practice. I know you're involved with the alliancing in your region. I am, for my sins, I'm chairing our rural um, health alliance, and yeah. uh, and that that is exciting because we're going to seriously address issues which have been burning holes in our heads for the last 20 plus years. The, problems with fragmentation, the need for integration, the inequities of healthcare, and these are going to, we're going to see them addressed, and and for the first time we are going to see them addressed constructively, and yeah. I would have guessed, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not watching this podcast, I'm talking to you instead, it's going to be really exciting to watch, uh, watch that unfold, I reckon over the next 12 months we're going to see changes which we've been dying to see happen for the last 20 years, and we're actually going to see them happen now, yeah. uh, and you and I are going to, we're going to report that. God, we're special. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it'll be entertaining and fun for people as well. I mean, we'll have interviews uh, with um, some of the movers and shakers and, and people involved in these sorts of things and, uh, and reflect on some of the news and how it's impacting uh, ourselves and our colleagues. So 
yeah, I think it's going to be a, a useful thing to, to take part in, and I think it'll be a, a really interesting and hopefully quite a fun thing to watch. Speaking of which, um, there was a picture that I, um, I wanted to show you, um, and I just, I don't, I'm just interested to sort of um, hear what you had to say uh, about what's going on in this picture. Now, there's a problem really there. That the, the question we need to ask is, um, why did that cross the road? Okay, um, to get to the other side? Uh, well, or? I think you're about right. I, um, now, th th there's numerous answers to that really. And why did half the chicken cross the road? That was to get to his other side. <laughs> okay. uh, why did the piece of chewing gum cross the road? It was stuck on the foot of the chicken. chicken okay. um, any correlation between that face and mine is total coincidence, to be honest with you. And moreover, the chicken and I were just good friends. What I found most challenging about this picture is that behind you, that says, um, I'd like to be an Australian or something similar. Or a... Yeah, and then following that says, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, that actually chicken was sponsored by Tui, um, which is very good. And moreover, to get into that suit involved the consumption of a... Buzz, you had me in a cow suit. I don't, do you remember that? I remember that, but I'll never forget that. I, 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 my, my therapist and I talk about it monthly, um, and that I still struggle to see you um, uh, out of the uniform there. But we're not dressing up for the podcast. And, 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 well, unless we get specific requests. But you've got to admit, chickens are rural, aren't okay, they? they? At are. the end of the day, uh, it's a, it's a rural, that was a rural image, yeah. uh, really. Uh, and uh, it just shows my dedication to the cause, really, that to might dress be, up as um, a chicken. Just briefly, how do you define rural? It's a good question. Now, there's two answers. We could have a, a, a non-serious or a serious answer. I mean, the non-serious answer is, and I, I'm, I think in years gone by, and the falling over of the of the um, of, of the the old um, way we did the rural ranking score was uh, um, if you've got a nice view and you can see a paddock out your window, call yourself rural and let's get some points. If and there's a goat somebody. somewhere nearby, uh, precisely, yeah. which is how you started after all. Um, it, it is a really hard one, and I understand that the, the, it, it's sufficiently hard that uh, two years of the network trying to argue about it, it fell over and said, forget about it. It was about three, three uh, actually. And the, God knows how long. Yeah. The One could argue, and, and I think locally we, we've come up with a very simple definition, really, which is twofold. One, giving 24-7 cover for your patients. Two, doing prime. And if the rural GP is doing both of those, I think you can hold your head up high and say, yeah, I'm a rural GP. I'm giving 24-7 cover for my patients. I'm doing prime. Um, that's a good standing block off which to leap. I'm sure you could unpack that and make it more complicated, but those two simple principles is a really good start. I don't know what you think. Do you want to make that more complicated? Or don't something? you have a, need to have a pair of red bands that actually fit you and that sometimes get cow shit on them as uh, well? And a chicken suit. And a chicken suit. Uh, they're, they're, they're two crucially important things as well. And a okay. pet goat. Um, and a... Uh, yeah. Well, I'm really looking forward to this, Bruz, and um, uh, yeah, let's hope um, that other people are looking forward to it as well. So. Oh, I couldn't agree more with you. Thank you very much. Um, look out for the New Zealand's Rural Roundup podcast, uh, which will be coming um, frequently to this screen soon. And likewise, um, if you want a more less serious approach, um, he's the man. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> anytime, mate, anytime.